Hey, how's it going guys and gals? Welcome back to this week's episode of Cartridge 2 Cloud. I'm joined today by Captain Tutu and Drunk Canadian. How's it going guys? Pretty good. Good, good. Good, and you? Good, man. Good, good. We got a lot of cool topics this week. We're going to be talking about some of the game updates that have come out uh, recently in game updates, Steam releases. Um, we're also going to be talking about um, also some new game releases, which is kind of, kind of a side subject. We got, you know, game updates, new game releases. We're also going to be talking about game remasters and remakes. What do we think? What what can they be done next? Aside of, you know, like the stuff that's come out recently and how popular they are also becoming again. But uh, as we always do, we want to start off of uh, what have we been playing this week, guys? Like uh, what's been what's been new and exciting? I know a majority of us have been playing most of the same game. <laughs> yeah. Just go, go ahead and go for it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the most of uh, we, we've mostly been playing Fallout 76, which uh is really interesting. I know we're going to go into like detail about it later. And um, for me personally, uh, a lot of Fallout 76, uh, uh, lots of Animal Crossing still, really loving the uh, the new update and stuff. And then interestingly, interestingly enough, Fortnite, I got brought back into Fortnite because of the, uh, the Travis Scott event that happened on, uh, I think it was Thursday was the first event. And uh, I kind of stayed with Fortnite because it's been a really cool way for me to kind of connect with my little cousins because they love and play Fortnite like crazy. And uh, I met up with them <laughs> online from the uh, the Travis Scott event. And uh, nice. I've been playing a lot of it and kind of kind of falling back into Fortnite. My love for Fortnite kind of comes and goes in waves, but um, it's been pretty cool. I got my, my Deadpool skin going and everything. So looking all fly and fresh. Nice, man. What about you, DC? Well, <clears throat> not nearly as uh, as exciting as that. I've basically just been playing Fallout um, as much as possible, actually, trying to get us, uh, my build finished. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just Fallout. Nice. Yeah, for <clears throat> for me and most of us here, actually, we've all been playing a lot of Fallout 76. On the side, I've been trying to actually play some of the other games that have come out recently, too, like uh, Industries of Titan. I tried to actually play some of the patches because they've been patching almost every day since the early access launch, which has been nice because, like, the first week I couldn't even finish like the first three hours of the game because it kept crashing on me at a certain point and they fixed the crashes they actually went through um another one i actually play was the uh surprise hit of xcom uh, chimera squad which we'll also get more into here in a little bit um and then also just a little dab of trying to check out some of the new updates for like uh mordhow and uh what is it called magic gathering arena which has also been kind of interesting Aside of just like doing my daily stuff for like Elder Scrolls Online and stuff like that, but mostly like simple stuff. But majority of my time is all Fallout 76. Like it's been, it's interesting. Um, well, we'll definitely have to get more into that here in a second of why I think that's uh, that's definitely a good thing um, overall. But uh, yeah, well, let's, let's go ahead and get going for our first topic. I mean, as as our our picture here on screen is going to show you, it's uh, me me Captain and Drunk Canadian also playing. That's that's the the oh, play. that's amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. We're all playing together. We're on the uh, side of a mountain, which uh, happens to be a toilet that I am sitting on. I am the center character in the middle. <laughs> uh, Drunk Canadian's on the left. Captain Tutu's on the right. Um, well, it's 76, guys. Like, at, since the uh, since the new update, like, what what has been some of your favorite things of the new update? That's, the, that's a tough one. That's a real tough one. To, to you, <laughs> I'll let you go. Yeah, for me, this is like my first foray into Fallout 76. And uh, I've always had an interest in the game uh, for a, the longest time. But of course, I got really disheartened with the beta and all the negative reception coming out from the beta. And of course, the negative reception coming out from the, uh, the actual launch of the g game. And we you know ever since then, it's been kind of seeped in all this kind of negative bad controversy ever since and a lot of people were looking forward to wastelanders is kind of like a almost like a refresh a restart of the game and uh in some ways it is and in some ways it's not <laughs> but for me um i really love fall 76 wastelanders uh, a hell of a lot and um like i i really want to play it even more like now talking about it um but even that being said, like, even though I love it, I cannot recommend the game at all <laughs> in this current wait, state. Wait, follow up? No, uh, 
Dude, I yeah. 100% agree. <laughs> yeah. I 100% agree. But even though like, we want to just keep playing it, you're like, nah. Yes, yeah. yes I, I can't recommend. Yeah, no, because I just can't. It's so broken still. It is so broken. And the quality of life is so terrible still. Like, it's great. It's fun because I already own it. But I could not, like, I couldn't recommend someone buying this if they didn't already. Yeah, like, Wastelanders is definitely a step in the right direction. And I can't wait to see, like, how they continue to build upon it. But Fallout 76 at its core is still, like, a really broken and buggy mess. Uh, it's really weird because this is the first time where I, like, love a game, but I can't recommend it still. Well, it's kind of funny. I mean, like, if you look back on the history of even, like, Fallout 3, Fallout 4, even, I mean, like, Obsidian did uh, Fallout New Vegas. I mean, every single Fallout game has come out, like, with a lot of bugs. And most of them have never, ever in their life get resolved. But this one is kind of weird because they kind of go back and forth with like, you know, because it's an on, it's an online only game. You really don't play it by yourself yeah. unless you're, you know, paying for a private server, which in fact, you're still not playing offline. You're just playing by yourself in a private server. Um, and that's honestly, sorry to cut you off, but that's honestly what makes all these bugs even worse is the fact that it is an online game because it's like it affects your progress and like everything you do so much more. Yeah, I, I mean, I can definitely yeah. see that. And some of the bugs where people can like steal your inventory and things like that. Those are some pretty bad bugs that have been around for like a long time. Well, I thought the, the inventory bugs new, right? Like the whole like looting, being able to loot people's stuff thing. Cause it's usually just a drop. No, but that same bug keeps coming back. Like this is the uh, first time I've heard of that happening. Like there was another one prior to this patch where people could do that a different way. And it's just like almost every patch opens up a new hole into your inventory for some reason. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. And that's the stuff that we don't we don't want to like see happen, right? Like we don't want to have it where it affects like you know players' progress or people losing stuff that they worked hard for and stuff like that. Like the only thing I'm happy about is I finally got you know got the ability to get into power armor, and I was super stoked for that. And apparently, I had a second suit of armor sitting in my inventory, which I had no idea I even had. Which I think I ran across that talking uh, suit before too, too, because it was the exact oh, same really? set, but it was twenty five. I was like, oh, cool. I was like, OK, so I like I went and put the settler skin on it. I'll have to show you that later. It looks so good. Um, yeah. And then I I'm also the uh, the communist bundle skin. Sorry to cut you off. Oh, dude, I want that skin, too. But it only it only yeah. fit, it doesn't fit on the radar armor. It only fits on like other armors like the oh. T48, T451. Oh, stuff like that. damn. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Does that make sense? Yeah. But as I said that, like, I, I agree to to the agree to an extent about the bugs especially like i don't want to see the bugs in there either but at the same time like the game itself still feels like almost new now because of it because like i hated it when it launched i was like this is this is bullshit like i don't want I'm, I'm not an rp here like i don't want to have like an rp server or something like that that's what people generally do in some of these games right especially like you know conan exiles or um there's a couple of them like you know they, they strip them npcs out in their private servers just to make like rp servers and that's basically what fallout 76 tried to be at its launch was like oh here's a fallout rp server you guys are the npcs go and have fun with it We're like wait what that's not what we wanted to do like nobody wanted to be the npcs man yeah exactly yeah. nobody wanted to be the npcs but now that they're the back thing that made fallout was the npcs and they yeah stripped it out like, and, yeah, I don't and, know. and wastelanders brought that back which is nice because now we have npcs and we actually have a unique story of why the NPCs are there and what the real problem is and things like that. Like you have the settlers versus the Raiders and then they're both fighting Scourge, which is a kind of a cool, unique story, like different from the other ones, right? Like the other ones, you know, like your kid was kidnapped in one of them. But I mean, you're playing a single player game the whole time. Fallout 76, you were caught in, you're, you were a worker for a drug bob or something like that. Um, Fallout 3, you were chasing somebody who had the controls to a nuke or I'd nuke something. Can't remember what the storyline to that was. If you're trying to find a nuke or finding somebody who nuked something, I can't remember what it was, but it's it's definitely worth playing now. Um, just don't expect it to be bug free. Like it's definitely not a bug free experience by any means. It's um, frustratingly buggy sometimes. Like I'd say I get angry at the game multiple times a day, and it's one of the only games that I get like frustrated with. I think. Well, yeah, and, and it's, it sucks because it's like most some of these things, too, aren't even consistent. Like you'll go and jump into another server or if you have Fallout first, you jump into a private server and you won't see some of this stuff, which is kind of weird, too. And I don't know if that's intentional or if that's like something they're doing to try to push people towards the subscription, which doesn't make any sense either. I don't really like that idea. It's, I mean, it's fear mongering. They're pushing you to get the, you want to play with the hackers and bugs or you want your own private server pay up. Yeah, I mean, I get it. It's marketing. It's genius. <laughs> 
I mean, now granted, now the the Fallout Sony or the uh, Fallout First bundle has changed dramatically since they that also you know came out and it, it was the Inception. Um, now it actually includes enough atoms that make it well worth it in terms of just the straight money about. Um, and then now you have the private servers. Now you have the extra bonuses to so like little you know extra skins and little perks and stuff like that. So it's not just as like crappy as it used to be because the old version of it or its initial initial launch of it was really stupid. Like it was, it was straight up a price gouge aside of just playing, you know, just by yourself, which was kind of stupid. Yeah. I I got to admit, I, I sadly gave in to uh, Fallout first as well, mainly for the extra space because I needed it. Um, Don't you because, feel like, dirty? You feel I dirty. Do, I do yeah. feel, <laughs> yeah, I do feel kind of dirty. That's um, why you can't recommend it, right? That feeling you just got. You can't recommend the game that makes you feel like that. Well, there's there's a number of reasons. I mean, it's it's the bugs, of course. It's like monetization, including first and including like like monetization is kind of sketchy. It's gotten better, but still kind of sketchy. Like I feel like first um, needs more to kind of justify the price than it already has. Um, At least it's not. I mean, it's not like, like, yeah, like I, I, it's not like a full fifteen bucks a month, which is nice. At no, the same time, yeah. Like you could get it down as low as eight ninety nine a month if you pay prepay for a year, but at the same time, like who wants to prepay a game, you know, for a year that you're not even sure if you're gonna play? Like I know most of us in, sitting in this room right now, like we don't ever play a game longer than three or four months at a time. I mean, we might revisit them from time to time, but like we don't consistently stick with the same game for three, you know, three plus months. At least for True, me, yeah. No, not typically. Like most of the time we're like, well, what's the next best thing or what what's new updates come out? Like we went on the whole, you know, space engineers thing recently. Animal Crossing, of course, is coming back. which is just another game I've been playing a ton of. I actually yeah, have I've got Counter Strike. That's like that's always kind of a constant. But, but Oh yeah. I mean Valorant also might be one of those new constants for me too in the future, because I actually like the styling of it a little bit more than Counter Strike. I mean Counter Strike's still gonna have liked it. It's different. It's uh and it's not super like convoluted. They do need a little bit more guns, I think. It's still kind of bare on that part, but um, it definitely changes it up a bit because the, yeah, the powers aren't the focus. Um, but yeah, like it, it Fallout 76 still has a lot of work to do, but it's definitely stepped in the right direction, I think, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I 100% agree with that. So it's it's definitely going to I think it's still going to improve. We'll see what Bethesda does to it. Like there's definitely listening a lot more to the community now. It seems like um, they were actually having weekly community streams just for Fallout 76, among other games that they're also doing with a community team, which has been nice. Um, yeah, and they, they did like a Reddit AMA as well. They announced like a lot of stuff coming. They didn't like announce like a proper roadmap, but, you know, there's like pets that are on the way. And um, like the the one wasteland update, which I'm really really excited for, where it c- kind of makes like enemies like uh, at your level, so you can kind of just um, do stuff with anyone anywhere. Yeah, and and that's some stuff like that is really really nice. Like I love that in MMOs when you can go, you're like, oh man, like my buddy's like max level, but he's helping me level, but now he doesn't feel yeah. like he's super overpowered because he he tears down with them, or we tear up with him or him and his bobs. So it's kind of nice in those regards, right? Yeah, so essentially, I guess you could fight like in-game bosses at like level five, perhaps. Maybe we'll see how that. I want to say probably fifteen. Fifteen is probably like that that low cap of the end-game stuff, at least for seventy-six anyway. Yeah. And after that, like fifteen, then it's like we've. I mean, me and you were we're going against like level forty stuff, and we were having yeah, like, we were doing all right with that. Leveling is weird anyway on seventy-six. So I feel like the the one wasteland update just makes sense anyway yeah what is the uh the game style survivor sorry i not play this game uh, it's, it's basically fallout 76 it's basically survival game um survival adventure like rpg um but it's online only with this one instead of it's basically based on the fallout 4 engine and they made a multiplayer only version of it which is new to the whole franchise yeah they've never had a multiplayer version of it like the only thing they've gotten close is elder scrolls online which is not an extension of fallout which is different you know like um ESO came out as its own game, its own engine, although it looks very, very similar to Skyrim. It is not at all in the same engine. A different company made that too, didn't they? ZeniMax. Uh, yes, yeah, so, ZeniMax. Yeah, ZeniMax controls and manages that. Bethesda has all the rights and the you know give the okay on it. Yeah, Zio Brian, we we actually have a um 
uh, here on Ainan's YouTube, we also have a playthrough that we did last weekend. We did like a three-hour playthrough with all of us, just like kind of just mess messing around and pulling out stuff. And we we actually may do that that kind of stream again here soon, just yeah, to you know, kind of like casual let's play. It's it's a lot of fun. Like I I love it. Like I love playing. I love playing with you guys. But you know, still can't recommend it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fun. It's a situation. Yeah, yeah. I'm having a lot of fun, but like it's not worth the price. <laughs> Not right now. I think it's definitely something to keep your eye on. Um, cause like I said, Wastelanders is fantastic. It's just Fallout 76 at its core still needs work to be done. Oh, and Wastelanders is definitely a step in the right direction, as we keep saying. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a YouTube if you guys want to check it out. Um, going on to some of the other updates, too, is Animal Crossing's new update. Like, Tutu, you want to head off that, that update? Sure, yeah. Um, so this week uh, has been a lot of cool new stuff coming to Animal Crossing. It's already came to Animal Crossing. And um, it started with uh, this week. They have a, a nature day, like a nature week event, kind of. Um, and it like every day you get these new objectives to do that are like nature based. So say it's like a plant. Um, some new shrubs or, you know, uh, send a neighbor a flower or something like that. And you get like kind of rewards for it. Um, and so there's also like a, a new, uh, merchant in town, uh, leaf, and he has a garden shop and he sells like, uh, like flowers and like the new shrubs and all kinds of stuff. There's another merchant, which is uh, red, which is like this really shady dude that sells art. And um, like a lot of his art is fake. And so you have to kind of like do this mini game to find out like which is real. And then like all the art is based off of, like real paintings or real sculptures. So you can kind of just look up like the real art and see like, oh, this this is not there. Like even like on they have like the Mona Lisa and the fake Mona Lisa has like eyebrows and like the real Mona Lisa doesn't. So that's kind of like how you tell the difference. And in the museum, there's like a whole new space where you could display like all the new art and the statues and stuff. Um, and then there's like a lot of events coming like next week, there's a Mayday tour, which is like these really cool, um, mini games that you can play on like these, uh, islands that you can visit. There's an international museum day, which is later in May. Um, and it's like a, a stamp rally where you receive like special stamps for different things. There's a wedding season event where you can like take special like wedding photos of these characters and you get like wedding themed items. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of like cool stuff. And Nintendo just like announced that uh, they plan on updating Animal Crossing for years and years to come, which is crazy and wonderful. Well, it's good. I mean, like Animal Crossing, even before, like people played it for a long time, even after it was like it lost support. And it's still I mean, even I think the last Animal Crossing only had like two years support, too, before it stopped. Yeah, uh, essentially, um, it had support like, yeah, for two years, which is longer than I thought it would. But um so yeah, they keep on the whole I, thing. I'm sure, Nintendo the, definitely. Yeah, they're Sorry. talking. About, if they're talking about doing the whole thing with like how they're going to keep the Nintendo, you know, the Switch being the long term thing, like the Nintendo being yeah. a sync, and then like the next gen Switch, which will have like backwards compatibility to all these other games, or keep the same kind of structure to games, like I could totally see that being like a long term plan for them. Yeah, definitely. And uh, this week, it like it was announced, like according to the NPD sales, like just how crazy. Uh, this game is selling right now. Um, I mean, it's selling so good. It's selling out whole Switch units right now. Oh, yeah. And it had like the, yeah. <laughs> it's so hard to find a Switch. Like, anywhere you look online, uh, it's really, really hard to find a Switch. It's like the third highest selling uh, game, like launch game for Nintendo. It's right behind Smash Ultimate and Smash Brothers Brawl, which is crazy. And then, I mean, especially Smash Ultimate being like that one, because everybody waited so long for Ultimate to come out. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing with, you know, Animal Crossing. I don't think there's been an Animal Crossing since, like, it's a 3DS game, right, last? Yeah, well, the 3DS was the last mainline game. They had, like, little side games here and there, but uh, yeah, that was 2013 when that came out, I want to say. I, I, I also found out the hard way last night they put in a new protection for rolling back the time. Yeah, they they did they did a lot of nerfs. Um, they did that because a lot of people were kind of you know uh, somewhat cheating with like money because you get uh, you get like interest over time 
through your bank account. So they kind of nerfed that. And then they nerfed uh, like the tarantula spawns even. And I want to say they even nerfed the price for it. Um, but, you know, the, the turn up stock market is still like the, the key way to get money. Yeah, they Did you say the uh, uh, turn up stock market. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I there's like to a, make sure I heard that correctly. Yeah, there's an in-game stock market where like every week, every Sunday, you buy turnips and you uh, you can sell it for a profit. But um, like the prices go up and down throughout the week, and usually like you want to like look online and look like what your friends have and whatnot, and, and kind of sell it like you know uh, at a really high price. Yeah, yeah. buy a low, sell high. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Make the most out of it. Yeah, if it, like mine were actually really good today, but I just didn't have enough time to tell everybody to get online because it was it was a uh, ninety four to s- today for me. Oh, yeah, I was I was gonna do the savings. Mine were ninety one, um, but I was tired as hell because of my stream last night. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, also another one too is Super Mario Maker's getting its final update. Uh, actually, I'm gonna pass this one off to Tutu again because he knows more about this one than I do. <laughs> And me. Yeah, so um, this is like another attempt that Nintendo's done with, you know, the whole games as a service stuff. And uh, they've done like a somewhat decent job, I would say, with this one. They kind of did a poor job, Super Mario Maker 2. Um, but it's got its final update this week. Uh, and it added uh, a lot of cool stuff. Most notably, there's like a, a whole world maker. So essentially, you can make your own fully fledged Mario game within Super Mario Maker 2. And I got to try it out, and it's crazy good. It's really awesome. Um, it's it's. I feel like this is stuff that should have been in the game at launch because, um, like when Super Mario Maker Two launched, you know, a lot of people were excited, but uh, it there wasn't enough in it to really make it like a proper sequel. I mean, yeah, they added like new items and um, some new stuff in the game, but. Um, there wasn't something like a world maker or, you know, even like the, the link uh, edition that they have now in the game, which is really cool. But um, yeah, it came out and I got to try it. Uh, the world maker stuff is awesome. There's like a, a new mushroom that kind of gives you Super Mario Brothers 2 powers, which is uh, really cool. And if you know Super Mario Brothers 2, it's like really different from all the other Mario games, but still really fun. And there's like new enemy types, like the Koopalings. There's like these little uh, crazy toy enemy types. And uh, there's a frog suit that they put in the game that allows you to like run on water and swim a lot faster. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was yeah. from like Super Mario 3 had that. Yeah, it was Super Mario 3 had that. <laughs> yeah, that thing was awesome. But um, yeah, it's, it's, I feel like it's kind of bittersweet that this is the final update. I'm sure they're going to move on to something else. I hope uh, it's uh, Zelda Maker. That would be my dream. But um, it's weird. Like, I feel like this game kind of had the same effect as, like, a, a Doom Eternal even, to where, like, the first game was so new and so special for uh, both franchises that, like, the second one is, like, the definitive game, like, and there's so much more added to it. But it's not. it doesn't have that kind of special factor that the first one had, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, and that was kind of the thing, too, with, like, even us and Fallout, um, you know, Doom Eternal. I mean, like, Doom Eternal was it's great. It's awesome in every aspect. Like, it was definitely yeah. a, an upgrade over the last one, but it didn't it didn't quite stick with people as much as, as the previous one did, I don't think. Yeah, and I, I feel like these new updates could have made it such a better game at launch. But, you know, it's kind of like, I'm glad we got it now, but, like, damn, y'all really need to think about, like, adding this kind of stuff at launch. Like a whole freaking Mario World Maker, like that's amazing. But you know, not many people are talking about because a lot of people are kind of over Super Mario Maker Two at this point. Yeah, and and that's kind of like the the kind of like a degradation of games as a whole. Really, I mean, you see a lot of games come and go now because it's just how many. For one, it's volume, of course. But it's two, too it's little, just, too late. So yeah, much. Now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, a game comes out and you're expecting it to be great. It's not. It crushes your expectations. And by the time it comes out, it's something else has caught your attention. Usually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and not everybody wants to wait, you know, for updates, really. Like you want to get the game. You want to have fun with it at the beginning. But if it's missing a whole bunch of stuff and it's patched in later, you know, that is that becomes that too little too late with a lot of those things. Right. Yeah. You, you want what you paid for when you paid for it. I don't know. It just it seems weird. Yeah. And I, I know like. 
there's things like development time and cost and whatnot, but like a lot of these updates for this game just came way too late. Like even like I remember kind of the biggest controversy at launch was the fact that you couldn't play online with friends and they didn't add that in until like the end of the year, which was crazy. Oh yeah. That definitely should have been one that, that was you know, like right off the bat should have been. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand that. Yeah, you'd really think. Yeah. Oh man! But it's it's great now, and I'm glad that we have these updates now. I just wish, of course, it could have been at launch. Oh yeah. So let's get into um our next topic of new game releases, stuff that's come out this this past week. Like what? Uh, so one of the ones that comes to mind, at least for me, is the surprise launch of XCOM Chimera Squad, which, by the way, only came out at ten dollars. Like for an XCOM Crazy. game, which is every other game, even some of their expansions have been way more than ten dollars. Um, have you guys gotten to play that yet? I have not. I actually haven't played any of the XCOM games just because turn based isn't really my style. But, uh... Oh, that's interesting. I, I played XCOM two very briefly, but what I played of it, I really enjoyed. Um, but uh, I'm I'm cu- curious about uh, Chimera Squad. It's different. It's very, very different from like XCOM one and two. And and it's weird because you have like a mixed audience. Like you have people that are really excited, like me, for example. Like I'm really excited that it's a new XCOM game just because I love the franchise as a whole. Um but you have people that dislike it because it doesn't follow like the storyline or the main well, it does follow the main storyline. It's kinda like a, a post events of XCOM two, like you know, like twenty years, thirty years later. And it's just unique and different. It kinda gives you like It's like Rainbow Six Siege mixed with uh, XCOM, which is very different because you have like a breach mode. You go in and um, breach in the door. You have an automatic turn right off the bat. Once you come in, you're surprising your enemies and then you go go to town from there, which is it's different. It's definitely challenging. Um, And the price point and the price point box. Yeah, for 10 bucks. Like who can complain about getting a brand new XCOM game for 10 bucks off the start? That's what I'm saying, man. For 10 bucks, the game could be garbage at 10 bucks. (laughs) I totally could. And it's great. And it's smooth. There's no bugs, no crashes. Like, in fact, I found the gameplay very unique. I only got about three hours in, but still, like, it was more than enough. Like that three hours was worth way more than 10 bucks by itself. That's good to hear. So I definitely I highly recommend that one. It's definitely different. Um, if you're one of the people that follow like XCOM, like lore and all that stuff to like a T, it might not be for you. Just, you know, be you know weary of that or mindful of that. But um, overall, it's great. Like I, I literally couldn't uh, I couldn't complain about it at all. And then the other one um, I know me and Tutu wanted to talk about a little bit was Predator Hunting Grounds. I didn't get to play it. Unfortunately, I was trying to fit time in before the show to, to actually do it. Um, which I may sell sometime this week. Did you pick it up? Uh, I haven't yet. I was going to do it tonight, maybe. But um, some of the things I'm seeing is still mixed. It's kind of like still running into some of the same problems that the beta did uh, a month ago or so. Um, is this the one where it's like Predator versus Alien versus Marines? Or no, like, no, no. That was, no. That was AVP, the old Alien versus Predator game. This, uh, one's, right, uh, right. this one's Predator versus Humans versus NPCs, which are still humans. Okay, but yeah. it's still the same print. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you still have like a tri faction kind of thing. Like you have your your four your four player squad versus a single predator versus your NPC missions, which the humans have to finish to get to the end to get out, and the predators there just fucking with everybody in the process. Yeah, it's based off of the original movie. Yeah, yeah, basically based off the original movie. It's as close as you can get to it, but it's got like all the lore of all the all the predators built into it, aside of like. Like it's got you. You've got four classes. You've got your uh, predators. Four classes of humans, and you have like your dif- different mission objectives. But they seem kind of like side objectives because you don't like the predator for himself. He can hunt anybody he wants, but he can't tell the difference between players and NPCs. Um, so he kind of goes after everybody, right? But then you, when you're the player, you're having to complete all these like weird little small objectives. And like to be honest, when I played it last, I had like I, like I said, I haven't played it at all during the, the launch. But when I played it last, like it was becoming tedious to do these tasks because it's kind of just felt like stuff getting in the way of what your real objectives objective was trying to be was to survive the predator, which you could easily do either separate or together. But you I don't know, it just seemed like kind of shallow to some degree, I guess is the way to say it. I have a question. Sure. 
So the predator is occupied by a player, like he's like yeah. a player, right? Yeah, yeah. And he can't tell the difference between players and NPCs, right? Absolutely, unless a sign of so movement. What, basically, would it, would it? Well, that's so. Here's what I'm saying: Would it not be beneficial to move like an NPC then? Because most players would be like, "Oh, that's just an NPC." Yeah, I mean, but they they have the incentive to go after both. Like, so they get the same points either uh, way. Okay, so it's not okay. I thought it was like they don't like maybe the players are like, "Oh, it's just an NPC. It's not worth it." Because that'd be hilarious. Yeah, I mean, you could totally try to do it, but like the predator just tries to kill everything. He doesn't care what what it is. He's just like, yep, I want to rip your spine out, and that's you know we're good there. Um, I, I was watching those little... players though, right? Yeah, and and everybody's still complaining about the same problem we had, which was like the varied um queue times. Like you could get a two minute queue, or you could get a twenty minute queue, and it's and it's still wildly inconsistent with weird uh ping rates between each you know between each play each player. So it's another problem. Yeah. And that's actually one of my least like favorite problems because like if you're especially if you're an FPS and you're trying to be accurate and do all this stuff stuff and you have ping being getting in the way like that's terrible bad like that's not anything I want to touch and it sucks because like Predator is near and dear to my heart like it's one of my favorite franchises like of all time and for the for companies to keep coming out with bad Predator games or Alien and Predator games or Alien versus Predator or whatever you know combination of them. Um, is always like super disheartening. Like I thought the the last Alien versus Predator game, which was Aliens versus Predators versus Humans or Marines, um, was actually a fantastic game, but it was super underloved at the time because it had just been burned by Alien col Colonial Marines not too long around that. Oh geez, yeah. And that, that was, game was super fun, man. That was a really it was actually pretty well done. I thought the the last AVP game. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. I played I played the bejesus out of that one on on Xbox 360. Oh man, like I. I went to town on that game. It was so much fun. Predators yeah, was actually fun. Yeah. The Marines were actually super fun. The aliens actually were really fun, but they were a little bit more challenging because you had to like sneak yeah, up on people a little bit more. Tricky. It was tricky. They all played uniquely though. It was great. Yeah, and I, I thought it was like like a good they had a good like sort of rock, paper, scissors system going. Like it was Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it was super good. Like, I actually really liked it. Um, and it like you could have somebody that was really super good on one of the teams and it still didn't feel unbalanced because it was still kind of like a like your teammates still had to help you to some degree because you, st you still have three teammates no matter what or four teammates. I can't remember. Something like that per team. So it was, it was still it was still good. But Predator Hunting Grounds, I'm I'm skeptical still. Um, yeah, I, I was watching like a lot of, um, like these streamers I, I watched and they made it seem like really fun and, uh, really engaging. And I was like, oh man, I kind of want to get into this now, but I'm still like kind of skeptical about it too in the same. Yeah. I mean that, 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 uh, beta, beta did not do it any justice, like by any means, basically. So uh, that's one that kind of worries me a little bit. Like I was watching some, some streams of it and it looked great. Yeah. Um, in fact, actually, it's funny. One of the streamers I was actually watching just before um, the show actually switched off of it and went back to Destiny. <laughs> he was still up on on my screen, so he gave up on it already. And there's not very many viewers in that cate category right now, too. Like uh, 3,400, 3, which is pretty low considering. Yeah, I definitely think it's another one to kind of keep your eye on if you're interested in it. Um, just to see how they update it over time and how they fix things over time. But as far as like buying it now, like I'm still like, eh, I don't know. Well, it's it's one of those things, right? Like Epic still got the two hour two hours or less than fourteen days playtime, you know, thing on it. So you could totally like play it in under two hours, and if you don't like it, I uh, just get rid of it. Which is what I may do. Like I may just try it just to say I tried it and then return it if it's not as good as it was, you know. When we last yeah. last tried it, if it's the same as when we last tried it, and they really didn't fix a whole lot or improve a whole lot from it, then I'd probably just give it up. I wouldn't spend any time in it because, like, when I played that, like when you buy it, a dress for just one night out and then you return it the next day, yeah, yeah basically. I mean, like, based off the beta, if if I had cho chosen off of the beta, I would have said hell no, stay the hell away from that game. But if they made some improvements or something since then, like, which they had quite a bit of time to do, um. I could see maybe it, it could have improved it, if they had listened to the feedback from it because I gave a whole like two page essay basically on the feedback yeah. of that game. I want it. I want it to succeed, but like the way they were coming about it was not good initially. 
Because it felt yeah, like- there's definitely like something special about the game. Like it has like a special unique charm, but it also has like a lot of basic to it. If that makes sense. Yeah, and like some parts of it are almost too basic. I don't know. It doesn't. I wish there was more goals for the predator. At least when we played it, there was there was like next to no goals for the predator aside of just killing things. Which really wasn't the case. Like predators usually come to hunt, hunt like alpha prey, not just humans for sport. Like there are some kind of giant beast for the predator to hunt. Yeah, like oh, something. I, don't know. I always thought the movies always portrayed it, and he like he was just kind of murder happy. Like if you got in his <laughs> way and had a gun, he was gonna you know take your spine and string oh. you up to the ceiling like some trophy. Like he did that to literally everybody, unless you didn't have a. Yeah, if you didn't have a gun and you didn't pose a threat, he was like whatever. Like he was trying to prove he was like the alpha, basically kind of thing. Right? Yeah, like anything threatened him. So I didn't know he was even really all that. I knew they like went after specific things because of like the aliens sort of franchise kind of getting intermixed. But uh, I didn't know it was actually like a big. Yeah, I thought they just like murder. Yeah, well, the like the whole lore. If you get into like the deeper parts of it, they they actually go to specific places to hunt like the best trophy. Basically, because they're all about killing the best, being the best. Well, then why would they go after humans? We're the worst. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, I strung like 50 of them up. This one guy is hard to kill. Screw him. He's my target. You know, oh, a.k.a. Danny Glover after. or Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I was going to say they Danny did go Glover's after Arnold. Not even that fast, man. Like, if you couldn't get Arnold, how are you going to get Danny Glover? <laughs> <laughs> totally right. Oh, man. Uh, let's take a short thing to our special segment of uh, Tucci's best deals of the week. Let's get let's get that going. Hold on. Looks so yeah. Uh, in case you guys don't know, every week now I put out an article for uh, Tutu's weekly deals and cool stuff, uh, which has been like a reoccurring segment on this show. But we decided like there's so many cool deals throughout the week, we might as well just make it an article. So uh, I will make sure to link that in the stream. Um, but, uh, some of my favorite deals this week, speaking of like, uh, predators, aliens, uh, apparently it's alien day and, uh, the alien franchise is on sale on, uh, both steam and humble bundle and, uh, alien isolation specifically, uh, you can get it for just $2 right now. And they have like the collector's edition, like with everything for about, uh, $10, I want to say. Oh, wow. Totally and, uh, worth it. Yeah. Very worth it. And as, uh, life shifter mentioned earlier, um the uh XCOM Chimera Squad, 10 bucks, of course. And uh if you're like a humble choice member, you can get it even cheaper. I want to say like nine dollars you can get it for. Um, so it's definitely a good deal for that. And uh lastly, I wanna give a shout out to Xbox Game Pass. They're awesome. Um Gears Tactics comes out next week, and then in May, uh Red Dead Redemption will be uh, available on Game Pass for Xbox only, and Gears Tactics is PC only. Then, of course, later on in May, um, Minecraft Dungeons will be available for both PC and Xbox. And uh, Game Pass is a, such a great subscription service, which you can get your first month for just a dollar. Yeah, I mean it's totally worth it, even especially some of the games they drop in there. It's super cheap. Like, I mean, this month for me anyway, I like the fact that you got Hitman Two, and uh, what was the other headliner game? I'm like drawing a blank on it for some reason. I don't remember, but a lot of great games on it. Like super, super good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just put it up in the chat right there. Check oh, it yeah. out. Lots of cool deals this week. Oh yeah, totally worth it. Free games too. It's a free game section. Like for the King is free on Epic Game Store. That looks pretty cool. I actually really wanted to play that. And I was like, I was about to buy it. And then it got announced being on free to play for epic and i was like oh i'm just gonna wait for the epic because it comes with all the expansions yeah. like there's no oh, really? reason oh, cool. oh yeah yeah totally worth it so if you it has five expansions that are all free and are all included in the game so if you have it it's it's totally worth it i was trying to look and see what it was but i got logged out on humble to see what my what the other games were oh you're talking about for the humble choice yeah i know the headline was uh hitman 2 which Oh yeah, it's a steal for me. I I got that early just so I could play Hitman Two. Yeah, Hitman Two, Gris. This is the Police Two, Opus Magnum, Raiden Five, Truck Two, which was kind of cool. It's like a remake. Shopkeep Two. There's a couple other 
titles and you get to choose between uh 10 of the 12 titles so you get to choose 10 out of the 12 of the best you know, whatever you choose like last month yep. was my friend pager on planet coaster totally worth it for people who have never played either one of those Frostpunk, pathfinder kingmaker book of demons like there's there's good stuff every month on it yeah it's been really worth it as of lately oh yeah like i feel like it's gotten way better because there was a little while there it was like kind of stale for like a couple months in a row and i almost made it yeah. deleting it or getting rid yeah of it. Um, Same here. So let's go to our, our last story of the night. Uh, game re remasters and remakes. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff that's like come out recently uh, with Res the Resident Evil franchise, especially like has come out with Resident Evil 2, now Resident Evil 3, and now we have uh, the Final Fantasy 7 remake, which apparently is only volume one of, or chapter one of the bunch. Um, I, Epi episode or something. Yeah, yeah episode have, one. Have they even said? Have they even said how many? I think it's going to be three total. Yeah, I believe like three. Thank God. Like if it was more than that, I like feel like seven. it would. Yeah. I, I, God, that'd be horrible. So or earlier you said seven. So it just makes sense. You may come seven episodes. <laughs> oh, man. I think earlier. Um, find um, that you could just drag it out, make so much money. Earlier before we started, you said you were interested in uh, Final Fantasy seven remake. I'd like to ask you uh, what interests you about that. Um, the, kind of the fact that they did like new love stories in it, or they ex explained them, go into de detail more on them, which they didn't do in the original game as much. Like the original game had yeah. them, but they weren't as like in depth, or they show as much as basically the current one does. Um, I saw some some cool things from uh, Bloody Faster TV, and it was basically like basically how the whole cast gets like super horny with Cloud. <laughs> like they're all like chasing him to some degree yeah and it's just hilarious the way they do it and that was one of the things that like super intrigued me plus the fact it's just a nostalgia trip for me i absolutely love yeah. cloud and sephiroth um and the whole story of final fantasy VII. and everybody played that yeah and it's it's super worth it like i play i think i played through that game that's the only game i've played through more than twice just because i love the story yeah it looks amazing yeah. Uh, I'm I'm debating on if I should get it now or just wait for a PC. I'm kind of debating on getting it now just because it's it's a reason for me to play my PlayStation more. <laughs> True that, yeah. Like I mean, I still haven't finished Death Stranding, but that one is also like daunting to me because I know it's like a 300 plus hour game. <laughs> so like, See, I'm gonna yeah. wait. Yeah, because wait. Horizon Zero Dawn is coming this summer, yeah. and that's gonna eat up a ton of time. And that'll Death Stranding is coming this summer as well. Yeah, and that'll get like basically, I don't know, that'll get me pretty close to when Final Fantasy VII comes to PC. Yeah, and I mean, I got I got Horizon Zero Dawn on the PlayStation Plus a few months back, and that was awesome. Like, it came with the whole collection of everything, all the DLC and stuff. So I was like, that's another one I got to play through. Phenomenal. Yeah, so I got I definitely got to dig through that too at some point. Same thing with God of War. Like, I still haven't touched God of War. I bought it when it when it came out, and I still haven't played it. Have you? You have not. You haven't played through Horizon Zero Dawn yet. No, I haven't had time, dude. Like, it's one of those RPGs that I, it just takes a ton of time. Like, I haven't even touched Pokemon in a while. Um, oh my god! How, what was the last uh, this last Pokemon? Uh, Sword, Sword and Shield. Shield. Yeah, Sword and Shield. I haven't. I got through to where I was like through the fourth or fifth gym, and I stopped because I just I for whatever reason it got distracted by another game, um, and just haven't touched it yet. But so keeping on the game remasters and remakes, like if. Now we see some of the success with all these new remakes coming out because they're completely remade games from the ground up, like engine, like everything. And some of them even fix some of the bad things about some of the games. Right. So yeah. what do you, if you guys think could be like, could be some of the new remakes or, and or remasters that they can do that would, you know, totally hit, you know, hit it out of the park. Like these guys did. I'll start off for me for one of them. If you were going to go with these Sony titles that, you know, we're all a lot of these, especially the current ones that are coming out are also like PlayStation exclusives at one point. I would totally love to see Legend of Dragon to come back. In a remaster or a remake, even better if it was a remake, because it, that would be an amazingly gorgeous game to do. But what do you guys think? Well, what would be something that you would you would pick? Um, For for me personally, like I, I can't stop smiling at the thought of uh full-on like metal gear remake and not metal gear solid but the og nes metal gear game i feel like that would be just kind of like the perfect send-off for the franchise 
uh, especially after Metal Gear Solid 5, to just kind of connect the entire thread together. Um, that's like my dream remake right there. I would, I would, I would definitely agree with that. I would say like Metal Gear and Metal and Metal Gear Solid, like both of those, like would be a great to do. I mean, Metal Gear Solid was another one I played a ton because it came out around the same time as Final Fantasy VII. Like I, I deep dove into that one. Metal Gear Solid would be cool, but um, Metal Gear Solid, I feel like it's still so fresh in my mind, and they, it's already been somewhat remade already. Yeah, uh, they but did. it was like they years remade ago. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so to have like a, a like a Metal Gear game in like like a, the Fox Engine or whatever, oh, it would be just incredible. It's just a box. Another another one that comes to mind for me is uh, either Silent Hill. Like the the early Silent Hill games, especially like two and three, like two especially was super good. Uh, or Dino Crisis or Parasite Eve, like those three, like right there would be like my my top four would be definitely my first one would be Legend of Dragoon, then Parasite Eve, then Dino Crisis, and then definitely Silent Hill somewhere in there. Dino Crisis is very likely though, because Capcom just recently renewed the license for it, so I would hope they would do something. That's that's one I could definitely see being done. I mean, it, yeah. it it could definitely appeal to like current audiences too, with like you know the love for Jurassic Park and Jurassic World and all that stuff. Like that can totally appeal to those you know those yeah, crowds. It's pretty much Resident Evil with uh, dinosaurs instead of zombies. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. Same thing with Parasite Eve too. Like has as popular as uh, Resident Evil's become. You know, since it's remastered or remade two and three, like a Parasite Eve one or two remake. Would be amazing. I'd totally be down for those. What what else do you guys think? Like, what would be some of those um, ones that you think that would be, like, super up there on that list? And it doesn't even have to be Sony titles. It could be anything. I've still got to go with uh, Chrono Trigger. I know oh, like, nobody knows that game. Chrono Trigger. Well, some people know. But I think that one would, like, uh, you know, Secret of Mana got remade and it did pretty well. Oh, the yeah. most part. I think Chrono Trigger would uh, do probably better if at least as good, if not better. Another one that comes to mind is like Xenogears or Xenosaga. Yeah, that's another classic they could bring back. I'm surprised you don't see them looking into like Final Fantasy 3 as well, because that was another like massive, you know, milestone in the in the franchise as well. Well, yeah, I, I mean, like Final Fantasy like seven was well, seven. It was seven, nine, and ten were like some of my favorites. And ten, they I think they just recently remastered, right? Yeah, well, somewhat think, recently, yeah, like the last five years or so, something like that. It came with like ten yeah, and ten two. Yep. So I can see some of those being being a thing. What what other ones do you think would be like the super massive, you know, big titles? I don't know, man. It's hard to. Nothing really comes to mind other than like we kind of nailed a lot. I think we, I think we definitely got the top ones of the bunch. Like those can all be like bread and butter, you know, easy, easy remakes. Well, not easy remakes, but easy selling well, remakes. That's a tough one too, right? Because like everybody's got their old favorites, and people probably have like you know, like I have an obscure favorite, Dragon Warrior from NES, it was like one of my favorite RPGs oh, of all dude. time. But like that's those another one too. people were like, but I only like the original first one. So I don't know. It's weird. Well, I mean, it's kind of like the same with like Legend of Dragoon. That game set it up for it's what seemed like a sequel and they never came out with it, which was weird because like the Legend of Dragoon had such a good story. Three discs long, you know, it was, you know, for that that era, that was a big thing. If it was more than two. Um, but yeah, like some of those, man, like the animation want, and everything was so good in that. I want uh, the E.T. game remade, the NES E.T. game. Et any oh my god dude that would be good too. Atari twenty six hundred yeah whatever. No, you should I'm almost look at it from uh, yeah. from the other side. Like what are the worst games they could remake? Like yeah, Paper Boy. Like some of the most <laughs> rage inducing Nintendo games of all time they remake. <laughs> oh god, Balloon Fight. <laughs> oh oh lord. God. I wouldn't Ice... mind seeing a Bubble Bobble. Another Ice bubble Climbers bubble. might actually be a good one. Oh yeah, that could be it. I feel like that's kind of already been added in, though. Wait, what do you mean? Well, because I mean it's in Super Smash Bros., so you kind of already get to play with remade. Ice How about like a like a full 
like ice climbers game for the modern era. Yeah. Ooh, Metroid. Oh, well, Metroid. Oh, oh like the original Metroid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the original Metroid. I could Man. see. I would love to see that one redone. Like I, I, I'm still waiting for Metroid Prime Four, but that kind of like disappeared off of everybody's radar. Oh, we all are. Yeah, well, they had to start development on that one from the ground up, so it's going to be a while. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, because I actually had that one on like my Amazon pre-order thing, and it's like it actually asked me, "Is like uh, this game seems to have no new updates? Do you want to cancel this order?" And I said, <laughs> "Yeah, I'm I'm just going to cancel it for now. I don't need it on my Amazon account." You didn't want to see it there. Yeah, it's just sad, man. It's like a sad, sla- sad reminder that we haven't had a Metroid game in quite some time now. God, it's yeah, been man, like I, I want to say it's been so like sad. seven or eight years at least. I still have a, a Nintendo GameCube with Prime One and Two. On. Oh man, wow. I, might, I might have to fire that up again. I used to, I still, it still works and everything. Oh, actually, I take that back. It's been thirteen years since the last Metroid. Oh my god. Uh, what since last, Metroid Prime Three? Yeah, Metroid Prime Three came out August twenty seventh, two thousand seven. Oh. So yeah. it's been a it's been a hot That's minute. Rough, man. That's been a hot minute. It was on um, Wii, yeah. the original Wii. The Wii, yeah. So yeah, that's that's. Oof. <laughs> My God, man! My God, that's a big old oof right there. Basically, like we thought, we took we we had to well for the next <laughs> Well, they're on par oh, no, with the. They rain. already no, they already counted to three, so they're already doing better. Oh, they already do them, yeah. <laughs> Their fourth one is just taking a long longer than before. Because like between two and three, it wasn't very very long. It was only like two years between two Metroid Prime Two and Metroid Prime Three. Yeah. Well, we got Half Life Two and a half, right? Yeah, essentially. Yeah. You just had to spend two thousand dollars to play it effectively. I mean, yeah, you had to have a VR headset and everything else. They have some non VR or non VR mods on it now that you can do it. I'm actually tempted to play that through. It it looks so weird though. From what I've seen of it, it, just, oh, does it, it doesn't. Yeah, it that game is meant to be played in VR. That's what it seems like. I mean, it's, yeah, it's possible, but you know, it's, it's kind of. I feel like it defeats the purpose. Oh, absolutely. Because there's a lot of interactivity with the environment, right? Where you kind of need to utilize the motion controllers and stuff. Yeah, I feel oh, like yeah. that'd be hard to translate to PC controls. Which is why I think they did that. You know, why they had to make it um, VR only. So it makes sense. Definitely makes as sense. As far as remakes goes, I don't know. I feel like uh, the rest of them will kind of be just like fever dream pitches. Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Oh, yes. Castlevania. I, I want a new Castlevania, period. Or even like a remake. Yeah, that'd be incredible. I would yeah. love Symphony of the Night. I used to have a PSP, and I just kept it because it had that game on it. And then I. <laughs> Yeah, that now I can't play it anymore, so I'm sad. Well, see, yeah, Symphony of the Night. Wow, that's yeah, that's 97. That's 23 years old. Yeah, so me great. That game's just, that game's of drinking oh. age. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I could totally. Did you not play that? No, I never got to play it. That's a that's one I unfortunately were, did not get to play. You were Dracula's son, Al, like his Alucard? name is Alucard. It's literally yeah. Dracula, Dracula back. spelled backwards. Yeah. It was hilarious, but it was an RPG with Castlevania elements, so you leveled up, but it was a side-scroller. It was awesome. It was the perfect blend of, like, platforming, side-scrolling, mixed with RPG. It was awesome. I can see that. And then, like, even for now, like, my, my Castlevania fix uh, has been the, the Netflix series, because it's been so good. Like, and they just got renewed for two more seasons, so I'm super excited about that. One or two more yeah. seasons, I can't remember. Metroid and Castlevania started a whole new genre. Yeah, Metroid. That's why they call it Metroidvania, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> All righty, guys and guys, I think that wraps it up for today's show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, any final words, guys? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I had something good, but I forgot. Um, what? Oh. Uh, the Last of Us Part Two. Anybody looking forward to that game? It's been leaked online uh, by like apparently a crazy ex developer that's really mad right now. So be careful when you're looking up that game. Oh man, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stay safe, yeah. stay classy in that case, right? <laughs> My God, it's good. All right. <laughs> 
Uh, check out. Don't forget to check out all the other fantastic shows here on INN, uh, the Meta Show, Open Comms, Push to Talk, and also us here at Cartridge to Cloud. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight, and hope you all have a fun and safe rest of your weekend. Have a good one. Peace.